enemy would have had his way, tonight you'd be six feet under. If COVID would have had his way, you wouldn't have made it to tonight. If the devil would have had his way, you would be in the mental hospital tonight. You would be locked up tonight. If the enemy would have had his way, Pastor Chuck, you would be locked up and you would be in jail for the rest of your life for dealing drugs and being a drug dealer in Galax, Virginia. But instead of being a drug addict and a drug dealer, <laughs> he started a hope center and started delivering drug addicts. And his daughter beside him, if the enemy would have had his way, she'd be locked up for the rest of her life. Because young people, the drug dealers that she was hanging with, when they got word that there was a raid coming, they left her in the house. Those that you're trying to impress, yeah. those that you say are your boo, <laughs> they left her in the house. <laughs> and the enemy said, this is the end of your story. But both of them sat here tonight uh, doing powerful ministry in Virginia because he's not done. If you got a story, would you take 15 seconds to testify? If you should have been dead, would you testify? Would you testify? with and who you connect to. Byron, I could have gave it to you beforehand, but Matthew, the 18th chapter, the 19th verse is critical who you connect to and even who you sit next to. Some of you are sitting next to people who've been on their phone. Some of you are sitting next to people who are making their grocery list. But I'm going to find me about three and a half people in this room that believe he can still do anything. I'm going to find this I'm going to find there's somebody that believes a miracle's about to break in and break out. I'm going to find there's somebody. Matthew, the 18th chapter, the 19th verse, Jesus speaking, he says again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth, Tell your neighbor, I'm going to need your help tonight. Tell you, I told you, it's critical. If you want to change seats, get your purse, get your Bible. Get your purse, get your Bible. If you sit next to somebody who's not engaged, just get your stuff and go find you somebody. Because if I can find two people, <laughs> if I can find two people, watch this shall touch anything that they ask. Anything that they ask, it shall be done. Bishop, I've got cancer. It shall be done. I'm in debt up to my head. It shall be done. My marriage is in shambles. It shall be done. Come on, find somebody to agree that everything you're believing for, everything you're asking for, shout of praise in this room as they bring the house lights give the Lord a great shout of praise in this room come on as you're returning to your seat give the Lord a great shout of praise in this room
if you came to tell me that miracles don't happen, you came too late. If you came to tell me that depression can't break in the moment of the anointing, you came too late. If you came to tell me that anxiety won't lead just at the mention of the name of Jesus, <laughs> you came too late. If you came to tell me that he don't save, sanctify, heal, and feel, you came too late. For if the two of you shall agree on anything, it shall be done. Somebody in this room with ulcers in your stomach, God is healing you now. Someone in this room with ulcers in your stomach, God is healing you now. Elder Marcus, there's a double portion anointing. Come right there. There's a double portion anointing coming upon you this night. Everything you've been concerned with, everything you've been worried about, God not only says he's about to turn it around, but he says you're about to get retribution for all the hell you done been through. If any two of you can't agree on earth, I just came to put faith in the room that I'm agreeing with you. I don't know what you're believing for, but I'm agreeing with you. I don't know what you're asking for, but I'm agreeing with you. I don't know what preacher needs a building, but I'm agreeing with you. I don't know what preacher is asking God for an errand that will hold his arms up, but I'm agreeing with you. I don't know what preacher is needing some people to come and lead worship, but I'm agreeing with you. I, I don't know what you need. But I came to tell you I'm agreeing with you I don't know what you need But I'm agreeing with you If any two of you agree Touching anything Tell your neighbor anything What does that mean? I'm about to give you a deep revelation Are you ready? Anything What is anything? Anything Come on destiny this is a house of miracles. That's why you're on your feet because you know that a miracle could break out at any second. Some of y'all staring like you're at the movie theater, but all of destiny is on their feet because they know that at any given second, the anointing will hit this building and your body will be made whole. Hey, somebody shout because you can. Tonight, we are honored to have with us the ambassador of City Harvest Network. He has become a friend to this house. This morning, he preached as a man from another world in this room with a prophetic word that even at lunch today, we continue to talk about. In 1929, I never knew that the eyes of the nation, I never knew that the eyes of the nation was on this place. Hey, Olivia, I need you to come here. Because the fear of losing that baby is about to leave you. The fear of losing that child uh, that God has blessed your womb with. Uh, that fear that's keeping you up at night. Uh, and the anxiety that's making you weak in your body is leaving you now. Is leaving you now. Is leaving you now. This is a Pentecostal church. That means miracles can break out at any time. Victory can break out at any time. Come here, Tamika. Those kidney stones are going to leave your body tonight. They've given you medicine and it hasn't happened. They've ran tests and it hasn't happened. But in the name of Jesus, kidney stones are leaving. If you suffer from kidney stones, receive a miracle right now. This is a house of breakthrough. This is a house of miracles. This is a house of Mark 16. That these signs shall follow them that believe. Come here, Haley Arnie. A fresh anointing is coming on you tonight. Uh, for you have felt displaced. Uh, 
but God's about to make you feel at home. You ain't been lost and you're not alone and you're not by yourself. God knows right where you are and there's a fresh anointing come up upon you this night. Oh God, I thank you. Oh God, I thank you. Oh God, I thank you for it. Ulcers are disappearing. Ulcers are disappearing. Ulcers are disappearing. Ulcers are disappearing. In 1929, the eyes of the nation were on Gastonia, North Carolina, because we had the biggest strike in the workforce this nation has ever seen. He told you this morning that Gastonia, a lot of the labor laws, are enforced because of Gastonia. But he said in the next four years, the eyes of the nation will turn back to Gastonia, not because the strike that's on the economy, but because the strike that has hit the ground. I am reminded of the young prophet who the man of God said strike the ground and he only did it three times and he said why only three times if you strike the ground God will send a revival to this city if you will strike the ground God will send revival to your family tonight we are honored to have the ambassador of City Harvest Network doing a phenomenal job around this nation doing a phenomenal job around this nation. Would you welcome to the platform? We're gonna tag team, we're gonna stand together. We're gonna stand together tonight and we're gonna hold hands in agreement and we're gonna put our arms around one another and we're gonna believe God for cancer cells to leave and tumors to leave for if any two of you, I don't know a bishop if we got anybody else in the room, but I found two people that believe God can do anything. I believe he can heal. I believe he can save. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. If I've learned anything, I, I've learned that the atmosphere of expectancy is the breeding ground for a miracle. Why don't you go ahead and create your atmosphere for your miracle tonight? Go ahead and let heaven know you're ready. I said let heaven know you are ready. Let heaven know there's some people with some faith in the room that are determined to move the mountain. Ah, come on. Come on. Silence is the language of defeat, but shouting is the language of victory. I got some preachers in the house tonight. We got some preachers in the house tonight. And Bishop, just before I walked up on the platform to try to put a little something, something on this fire that you have started tonight, I heard the Holy Spirit say concerning the preachers, whatever a preacher, just go ahead and show how to shout in this house. Go ahead, preacher. Come on, preachers. Come on, preacher. Let out your roar. Tonight, preacher. Tonight, preacher. We reunite to reignite. We reunite to reignite a fire of heaven that will usher in the third final great awakening of this nation. We have found the preacher that will preach without compromise. We found the preacher that'll believe God for the miracle. We found a preacher that won't backslide, but we'll march forward by faith. We found the preacher tonight that will get into agreement. Bishop, they told me before I got up here that Facebook has canceled us tonight. Facebook has stopped the streaming as a result of the service this morning where we violated their standards. The strike begins now. And I'm gonna try this out. I said the strike starts now. You can ban us, you can block us, but my God, you cannot 
stop us! Woo! I'm just sizing you up tonight. I'm just looking past the religious and looking for some people that say, if it takes to midnight, I'm not leaving till I get in the glory of God and possess his miracle. Tonight, I'm confident, Bishop, that this is an atmosphere of the miraculous. And here's why. You see, we've been, we've been, We've been dumbing this thing down. We've been watering it down. But there's a voice that'll cry aloud and spare not. I said, there is a voice of the remnant righteous that will cry aloud and spare not. You see, we've been taught that if we'll just have a five-hour concert, sing songs that sound like I'm talking to my lover instead of my king, then maybe I might get my miracle. The problem is, that the book is right and they are wrong. And the book says this in the gospel. Luke chapter 5 says that Jesus is teaching. He's teaching. You gotta, you gotta hear this. Don't you sit down on me and praise team. Don't you stop on me. The anointing is in this house, and I promise I can out preach whatever you play. So don't stop on me. Come on. It's a night of miracles, signs, and wonders. And the remnant got something to shout about tonight. It says in the middle of Jesus' teaching, it says that the power to heal the sick was present. It is the word that heals the sick. He didn't send a song to heal you. He sent his word to heal you. He didn't send a poem to heal you. He didn't send the magician to heal you. He sent his word and by his stripes, you are forever. You are forever. See, praise is important, but not by itself. It is the word of God, the teaching of the word. And tonight, the past 15 years, this man of God has been preaching the word of God. And tonight, Jesus says, the atmosphere is ready, not just for the blessing, but for the multiplication. Tonight is the night of your miracle, your sign, and your wonder as a result of the word of God that has been faithfully preached. I hear the Lord as I was praying today. It said, Destiny Church has honored me, and tonight I will honor Destiny Church right in front of City Harvest Network preachers. Shout, it's the word. Shout, it's the word. Shout, it's the word. Look over at your neighbor and say, he's talking about the word. It is the word of God that sets you free. Yeah. Tonight, some of you that are battling with perversion, yeah, God's about to close that door forever and change your desire. You're not walking in guilt and shame. God's about to wash you up, cleanse you up, and send you out, baby. Yeah, there's an invasion of purity gonna push that perversion right out of your body. Ah, there's some crooked backs about to get straight tonight because it's the atmosphere of miracle signs and wonders tonight. There's some IQs that are about to increase tonight in the atmosphere of the miraculous. I'm just trying to get a little faith in the room. You see, it's the word that heals us and it's the word that reveals the reason that we are so disconnected from our healing. The prophet said, Bishop, there's nothing wrong with God's ears. I said, there's nothing wrong with God's ears. In other words, he hears you crying yourself to sleep at night. 
He knows the sorrow that nobody else knows because you put that fake smile on your face like you're not hurting on the inside of your soul. God sees it. There's nothing wrong with his ears. And the prophet said there's nothing wrong with his hands. It's not that you've drifted so far that God can't grab a hold of you and reach you in your misery and give you your miracle. Now the prophet said, say the word said, the word said, the problem is your iniquity. You have placed a barrier between you and the blessing. Or one translation says it like this, Bishop, that you caused a breach between you and the miracle. There's a gaping hole between you and your healing as a result of your sin. But I come to tell somebody tonight that 1 John 1, 9 says that God is faithful. I said God is faithful. If he's ever proven himself faithful to you, shout now. He is faithful and just, not just to forgive you. I'm not just forgiven. I'm not a slip and slide and saint. I'm not just forgiven. It says he will cleanse me of all of my unrighteousness. He's going to wash you up and make you brand new tonight. It says your sin has caused a breach. The bridge between me and you, Bishop, it has been destroyed but you and I are connected to a voice you and I are brothers in the faith that sit under the same anointing of a general of many generations that preach the message that we would repair the breach that there would be an anointing that would rebuild the bridge to the blessing and tonight we rebuild that bridge right here in Gastonia North Carolina oh the planks between me and my miracle tonight we reunite and reignite together and we place the plank one by one determined that I'm going to get to my miracle Isaiah 58 12 they that shall be of thee Every preacher in the place ought to go crazy when I quote that verse. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Come on, give me some. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Isaiah 58, 12. They that shall be of thee shall rebuild the old way. They shall be called the restorer of paths to dwell in. You see, what was and what is in ruins is about to be rebuilt by the kingdom of our God. We're about to rebuild cities. We're about to rebuild churches. We're about to rebuild families. We're about to rebuild nations. We are the repairers of the breach. The path that has been abandoned. Tonight we rediscover the path to personal prosperity. Bless me, oh God, I won't let you go until you bless me. The plank of healing, he paid way too high of a price on that cross for me to remain sick and in pain. The curse has been reversed at Calvary and I shall get my healing tonight. Woo. The anointing is here. So just a few years ago, Bishop, Pastor Parsley pulled me up on the platform and then he laid hands for an impartation. You see, you can only give the anointing that you possess. The anointing is tangible. 
and fully transferable which means if it's on you you can grab your arms around your neighbor and release that anointing on them tonight it was a prayer call miracle healing victory service pastor parsley brought me up and he said there's a three times greater anointing for a healing coming on you he laid his hands on me and then i lay there on the platform taking a spiritual nap when i woke up there was fire in my bones i was not yet the bishop i was just pastoring in irons in ohio but i got an invitation right after pastor laid hands on me for healing i got an invitation to go to a, a good old baptist church that faithfully believed that the gifts of the holy spirit had stopped when the last apostle died and so I thought to myself, I'll honor this church, Bishop. I'll just preach salvation. I don't want to cause any controversy because I'm a man of order. So I went to that Baptist church in Huntington, West Virginia, and I preached me a good old salvation message. I preached a message of faith, and the altar was lined full of people. And right over by the monitor, there was a lady that was crying I mean, she was weeping. Oh, if we just get back to weeping in the presence of God, if we get back to crying out in desperation to the king. And she was praying so loud that I could hear her prayers. And so I was over here praying with somebody, and I heard that she was interceding. There are those that intercede and those that intercept. You better stay away from those that are trying to intercept your blessing and those that will intercede for your blessing. She was crying out for her son that was battling addiction. Her son that did not have the ability to stop putting the needle in his arm. And she was just praying in the spirit. You know, praying until there are no English words groanings and utterances begin to happen and so I thought to myself Bishop I believe I'll just go over here and get in agreement with this lady that God's going to set her son free when I got over there I put my hand there I didn't have that nice bishop ring yet as a gift don't you judge I put my hand on her and the moment I placed my hand on her, there was a good Baptist lady behind her. And as soon as I laid my hand on her, she let out a, ah! And I thought, what is the matter with that lady? But what I didn't know is that the lady that was interceding for her son had a tumor on the back of her neck and the moment I touched her the tumor completely disappeared right in front of everybody come on you ought to take 30 seconds to intercede right now you ought to take 30 seconds to intercede right now Miracles are about to break out in this room. Somebody take 30 seconds. Come on, take 30 seconds and intercede. Intercede and your family will be restored. Intercede and a miracle will break out. Intercede. Bishop, I'm about, I'm about 30 seconds away from letting these altars be flooded and slapping hands on every person that needs a miracle, needs a breakthrough tonight. Well, the first one. But, but hold on, before you go well, ahead. the first one, Bishop, you've said two things. Come on. Two things you've said while you were prophesying. Come on. you got to learn to grab hold of the word. Yes. You were talking about bodies being crooked. Yes. And then you begin to talk about a tumor disappearing. Yes. But we said at dinner last night with Pastor Chaz and Pastor Brandy, who told us that their 14-year-old son has already had Easton, who has already had to have surgery on his brain, and now his spinal cord is crooked. I still believe that the two of us in agreement can lay hands on a 13-year-old boy. I 
said, I believe that we can lay hands on a 13-year-old boy and God can do a miracle in his body. He's crooked. Now watch this. Yeah. Because I done seen this in the spirit. Come on up here, mama. Hey, Baba, don't so, so, Bishop. Woo. So, Bishop, I need your praise team to get ready up here with us. Come on, praise team. Come on. north in Michigan and we were having a healing service and I was working the line and then I saw this man that had never spoke before he was born and he had he was dealing and diagnosed with extreme autism and everybody wanted to rush to go put hands on him and I said stop it because I'm a son of a legacy that has learned by those that went before me that there are some miracles that have to marinate in the presence of praise and worship. And I knew that Dr. Oral Roberts, can we just celebrate the legacy of Dr. Oral Roberts tonight? Because the anointing of Dr. Oral Roberts as an entrepreneur and to build is on your bishop! Dr. Oral Roberts taught Dr. Rod Parsley about his son that needed a miracle. He said, you just get him in the presence of God's glory and let him marinate in the presence of God and watch the Lord undo that thing and touch him. And so we grabbed that young man. Pastor Blake, you were there. I stopped the healing line and we took the young man and we put him over in a corner somewhere and I told the praise team get around him and just praise around him don't touch him just get around him and praise him and when the moment was right I walked over to the young man and I just did a bit of him just a and that young man fell down to the ground and when he got up though he had never spoken he said Jesus So praise team, here you are. I want you to make a holy huddle. And mama, I'm gonna tell you what I tell my precious wife. The word says that the effectual fervent prayer of righteous people will accomplish much. Tonight, your prayers will accomplish much with the faith Come of on, your brothers and sisters. sisters. Come on, praise us. Can you believe God? Come on, praise us. 
Can you believe God to heal your boy tonight? Mother, can you believe God tonight? You're in this place tonight. You're in this place tonight. And you need a miracle for your child. Raise your hand. You need God to do something for your child. You see all these people? Well, before God does it for you, he's about to do it for them. I'm going to give you this microphone, and you're going to pray for 30 seconds, and there's a healing anointing for children coming in the room. Are you ready? Are you ready? Get your hands up. Get ready to catch it. Ready? Are you ready? All right, sis, let it out. All right, mamas, get your hand up. Because I'm not about to prophesy to her. I'm about to prophesy through her. Healing to your children in the name of Jesus. And just pray. Come on. is here a part of City Harvest Network and you have been fighting friction. People in your ministry are causing friction in the ministry. It is a spirit of Jezebel to shut the voice of the prophet down. If that's you, preacher, I need you to come right here. If that's you, preacher, I need you to come right here because God's about to break you free. That Jezebel's not going to wear you out any longer after tonight. Come on.
this place tonight that you need God to straighten up and heal your back, I want you to get to the front as soon as you can. We're about to lay hands tonight and watch God heal some broke, hurt backs tonight.
healing in your body, just get down here. You need healing in your body. I don't care what it is, just Only get God down do here. Only God can do it. Only God can do it. to go diabetics be healed in the name of Jesus everybody with diabetes throw your hands up come here Jordan come here Jordan come here Jordan come here Jordan believe with me believe with me for every diabetic come on believe with me for every diabetic Believe with me right now that every diabetic is being healed right now. Hey! All right, church. Robin is about to get a second miracle. I said, Robin is about to get a second miracle because what God begins, he will always bring to completion. I want you to reach out your hands of faith towards Robin and begin to pray in your heavenly language because here we go. Three, two, one.
for a baby yeah, yeah. and the doctor don't know what's wrong but they told us that we would never have babies and Lily Grace, Sadie Hope, and Judah Tucker are here tonight. The same God that healed her womb is the same God that's about to heal. If you are believing God for a baby, shout now. Lay your hands on our young people and pray the fire hits them. Hey, what's right here, Bishop? Bishop. Hey, hey, you believe? I do. Church, you believe? You're about to get strength to those legs. My God. You're about to get strength to your body. It has to happen. Oh, Judah's about to rise up. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Pastor Rachel, believe in God for a baby for 15 years. Come on, he's doing it right now. Come on, fire on these young people. Come on, fire on these young. We are the generation of revival. We are the generation of revival. gentlemen bring her up right up here on this platform bishop this on, whole bring, family bring her up right here watch this bishop hold on come on hold on face in the room come on watch her come on come My on because this My God. this becomes a trophy tonight My God. i said it becomes a trophy tonight here we go come on those legs are getting straight Come on, walk towards me. Come on, let faith fill the room. Come on, let faith fill the room. Hold on, hold on, get ready. Because here comes another dose. This entire family battles scoliosis. Scoliosis, scoliosis on both and diabetes. Yeah. Well, there's a. And his brother. Well, there's a Christ for every crisis. And there's a name above every name. And if it's, it's got the a name, name of Jesus. If it's got a name, it's, it's got, got a, a power. Knee. And if it's got a knee, it's got a bow. And tonight it bows to King Jesus.
right here. Everybody say, hello, Pastor Keith. This is one of the most faithful men God's ever placed on the planet. Fire, 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 fire! Everybody say, hello, Pastor Keith. Faithful. And you have been sowing for so long. And I was watching you while I was having fun. And the Lord said, you're about to write one more check. And when you do, God's about to release a harvest. You've been sowing for so many years. And this next seed is going to create sowers into you. Your property line is going to be cleared. Your building is going to be built. You will see it come to pass. You've been faithful. Now God's about to turn it around, and you're about to receive sowers into you. about to turn it around and you're about to see people driving many miles to you. You're about to have a servant on your right and a servant on your left. It becomes a night of elevation. on Pastor Lee right here and a river's about to flow out of his belly. Pastor Steve, come here. Come here, Pastor Steve. Because I'm going to prophesy to you, but I'm about to prophesy through you. I'm about to prophesy to you, but I'm going to prophesy through you. Wealth. Wealth is coming on you. 
wealth is I'm prophesying to him but I'm prophesying through him that wealth is coming on you wealth listen to me wealth is not just your money but wealth is your mind wealth is your soul wealth God's about to give you the power to get wealth what you've seen as provision will not compare to what's coming on your house what you've seen as provision you've not seen what God's getting ready to do multiplication is coming on your house multiplication is coming coming on your it's coming on your house it's coming it's coming on your house somebody scream if you believe it Bishop Bishop this precious young lady right here look watch that lip begin to quiver yeah the Holy Ghost about to Bishop, she said, I don't know what's going on tonight, but whatever it is, I want it. We're here. Go ahead and get you some. Shout now! Don't you leave us. Shout the anointing. The anointing. The tangible manifestation, power, and glory of heaven. It is tangible. You can touch it. You can feel it. It's tangible and it's transferable. That means if it gets on you, he can get on them. Here's what I know tonight. God has given me great favor. And tonight, it comes on you. Proverbs chapter 3. You'll find favor with God and with man. That means he's going to move you to the front of the line when you should have been in the back of the line. That means you're blessed when you come in and you're blessed when you come out. That means you're going to prosper. That means the wealth of the wicked are coming to the right.
What we got? This is Lena. Yeah. She came here tonight believing. Her name, go say again, you're talking too fast. You're getting too excited. Her name is Lena. Lena. Everybody say hello, Lena. And when I walk by. This is just a drive through of miracles tonight. She's about to put her order in and God's about to deliver and somebody's going to praise him for it tonight. What's the order tonight? What's the request before the Lord? She said, I want a complete restoration in my body. She said, I want a new heart and I want new kidneys from head to toe. She's believing for complete healing. My God. Let faith arise. Let faith arise. Let faith arise. God said, I'm about to give you a new heart tonight. Shut down my headset! 
Lay your hand on him and agree with somebody close to you. Mr. Karn, lay your hand on the guy in front of you. His name is Danny. He's one of our best friends. Lay your hand. Come on, agree right now. Agree right now. Agree right now. He's healing bodies. He's restoring families. He's restoring marriages. But what's this? He's restoring the fire of his spirit back into the church. Bishop, you just said a thing. God is restoring families. Come here, Pastor Chess. Because what the enemy tried to take from you, God's going to give you an anointing for. I said what the enemy tried to take, God's going to give you great favor. Now watch this. Praise him tonight. Now listen, if you're from a remnant church, I want you to shout now. If you're from a remnant church, I want you to shout now. God's about to give you something to take back to them. I said something this morning in this house. This family, where's Pastor Rachel? Where's she? They're there. This family is heaven's solution to a situation. God still believes in family together. And the church is about to be elevated with an anointing to put mom and dad back together. This right here is one of their precious daughters. And I've been around to see that she's got the anointing of her mommy and daddy. They have the anointing of family. Pastor Chess, get your hands up and get ready because you're about to receive from this child of faith an anointing that's going back to Remnant Church and you're going to see families completely reconciled. Come here real quick. We're almost done. Come here, Brittany. Come here, Brittany. Because Bishop said a thing. Come up here, Brittany. Let everybody see how pretty you are, Brittany. Come here, Pastor Rachel. Let everybody see how pretty Brittany is. Because Bishop said that perversion is coming off of you tonight. Brittany, how long have you been in this church? Since uh, December or November. Since November or December. But when she came here, she was a homosexual for how long? 12 years. For 12 years. I thought there was a church in this place tonight. Don't you let that backsliding culture lie to you. Hey, God Jeremy. Set you free. Bring your wife and come here. You might be born that way, but you can get born again a different way. Jeremy, bring Mallory and come here in just a moment. I'm going to minister. Brittany came here in November or December, and Pastor Chuck, she was a homosexual, Pastor Chuck, for 12 years. But standing right here in this altar, I didn't know that she was... But when she gave her heart to Jesus, God delivered her right here. What? And now God's about to anoint you to lead them to Jesus by the hundreds. We break perversion now. We break 
make perversion now. Pastor Blake, what we got right here? This is JC. He's from Pastor John May's church in Hickory, North Carolina. He came here tonight and he said, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost and I want to feel the fire that you all have. Somebody shout! You want it? I said, you want it? I said, you want it? Then give it to him, Kentucky style. Psalms 23, Psalms 23, I shall not want. He's not the God of your need, he's the God of your want. Somebody needs to grab a hold of God's provision tonight and declare like the psalmist, I'm walking out of here tonight and I shall not want. Open your mouth and prophesy over this generation. Prophesy over this generation. Prophesy over this generation.
told Pastor Chance, and I got permission to say this, but homosexuality that has run rapid in the remnant church will not make this transition into this new season. I break every spirit of homosexuality. I break every spirit of homosexuality. It won't live in that building. It won't live in that building. We break it. Somebody shout it's broke. Somebody shout it's broke. It's not broke just tonight. It's broke in future generations. When you shout it, it broke in future generations. that are battling addiction, drug addiction tonight. I want you to raise up your hand. Raise up your hand, my God, keep it up. Come here, Pastor Blake, get up here. Keep your hand up. This right here is my childhood best friend. Chuck, where's Chuck? There was a time in his life that he was homeless and helpless and could not put the pill down couldn't put the needle down. I remember when I was in Iraq, I was, I would call his dad and ask his dad, how's Blake doing? And his daddy would just cry and hang up because he didn't even know where his son was. But the devil is a liar and there's freedom in Jesus. And one day, I said one day, God completely set him free. Shout! I said, shout! He broke the spirit of addiction off of him forever. And then, he's just a good old hillbilly from the hills of Kentucky. And God broke the spirit of illiteracy off of his family, and he became the first one to ever graduate from college. I wish you'd shout like God's about to do it for your family. He's about to do it for your family. Pastor Chuck, tell them in 30 seconds what happened to you. I was a drug dealer at the age of 27. Eat 14 grams of meth, was dying on a police station floor. When I called unto Jesus and he came down and rescued me in a coma for three days, kidneys shut down, burnt spots on my brain, damage to my heart. The doctor said he'd be a vegetable for the rest of his life. But on the third day, God said, live. I came back to life. He raised me up from that church bed and he set me free. And now I stand here today as a voice crying out saying, God can do the same for your child. He can do the same for your brother. He can do the same for your family. God's not a respecter of persons. What he did for me, he can do for you. All you got to do is stand and lift your hands and say in the name of Jesus Christ, we break every demon of addiction. We break it generational curses. We break it off your family, off your children in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody ought to shout and say thank you, Lord, for setting our children free, setting our families free. My God. Now, hold on, hold on. Keep that mic. Keep that mic. 
Because agreement yes. is essential. Yes. I said agreement in the yes. kingdom is essential. Yes. Now you got family members that are battling drug addiction. Get your hands back up. Come on. Hallelujah. They're about to drive those devils Hallelujah. out tonight. Hallelujah. These two men of God at the same time. Jesus. Don't you pray no sissified prayer. You let the fire of the Holy Ghost out. I'm going to count to three. And at the same time, you're going to take 60 seconds and drive out that spirit of addiction in every home tonight. Are you ready to receive it? We break every demon of addiction. We break it in Jesus' name. God, you're going to heal bodies. You're going to heal minds. You're going to restore children. You're going to restore families. God, you're going to get them out of the streets. God, you're going to get them out of the prisons. God, you're going to get them out of the homeless shelters. They're coming home in Jesus' name. They're coming home healed. They're coming home delivered. They're coming home made whole in Jesus' mighty name. Of your family. Yeah. Shout for the victory of your family. You want to dance for your family. You want to dance for your children because they're coming home. You want to shout unto God with a voice of triumph and say, My child is coming home. Right now we have one of our dear elders, a precious woman of God that's connected to this house. And her mother, she was not going to be able to be here today because she had to watch her mother. Well, her mother fell yesterday and she broke nine ribs, three vertebrae, and now they've put her in ICU tonight. But if I read my Bible once or twice, they anointed the handkerchiefs. And when the handkerchief got to them, the same anointing that's in this place is about to get in that place. One of my best friends growing up, one of my best friends growing up, he's the worship leader at the Point Church in Belmont. His name is Jonathan Huffstetler. I said his name tonight because I want you to declare his name. They just got word right after his brother was just killed in a car accident. Now the doctor just came in and said, you have so much, his father, Steve, uh, that you've got so much cancer in your body. There's even nothing we can do for you. They anointed the handkerchiefs. And when the handkerchiefs got to them, what? healing entered in their body give me a bunch of handkerchiefs because we're about to anoint the handkerchief tonight and when they get to where they're going the same anointing that we feel in this room is about to get there somebody agree with me
Go right into it. and thank him thank him if he's done something for you tonight thank him if you felt his presence thank him come on thank him for the anointing Let's thank God that right now Miss Amy Amos has been with her mother in West Virginia who's not been doing well. And let's agree for her family. Come on, let's agree for the Bishop Amos and his family as he's serving and traveling this nation and ministering to us. Let's thank God that he ministers back to them that there's not a need in their life that wouldn't go unmet tonight. That there's not a need in his life that wouldn't go unmet tonight. Come on, let's embrace. Come on, let's believe together for the men of God tonight. Come on, let's believe God tonight for the men of God tonight. mother I need my dad and my mother I need my dad and my mother to come and lay hands on Bishop Amos he's about to feel the embrace of family he's about to feel the embrace my brother and my sister come and lay hands on the man of God he's about to feel the embrace of family of the world that they'll never know what the inside of a nightclub looks like 
that they'll never know what the taste of alcohol is. I pray over a generation, holiness is still right. I said holiness is still right. There's not a compromise in this building and there won't be in this generation. God's gonna keep these kids unto himself, set apart. We cover the man of God tonight. Come on, lift up your hands one more time and thank him. Everybody lift your voice. Everybody lift your voice. Come on, sing it. Come on, sing it, everybody. Come on, everybody lift your voice. Sarah, the Lord's about to visit your home in an unprecedented way. Sarah, you're about to encounter God's presence in an unprecedented way in your home. In your home. How many want God's presence like this tomorrow and Tuesday? I don't know about you. But when I was touched at 12 years old by the fire of the Holy Ghost, I've never been the same and I've never wanted anything else. I don't understand how people can experience the kind of oil that's in this room and then go sit in a service for 45 minutes and get three points in a poem and go home. I don't understand. If God's glory is not in the room, I don't want to be there. I don't understand how people have felt anointing like that's been in this room and then went into some church with some ice cold pimp. I didn't say preacher. Some motivational speaker. God give us sons and daughters that won't compromise the fire. Church Grove, they'll tell you, you're going to have to quit screaming. You got to stand still. You have to quit sweating. It's a lie to shut down the prophetic anointing that breaks the yokes of generations. May the same oil that's in this house tonight get on every church that's represented in this room.